What's good everybody, it's Sean here, back today with another New Balance review. So today we'll be taking a closer look at this New Balance 550 in the burgundy and turquoise colorway. Today's video is sponsored by the good people from Hefalux. Hefalux is my all-time favorite sneaker insoles, and they sell ETP insoles, which essentially is the same material you'll find in Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to check out their website which I've linked down below in the description box. You'll see they sell a variety of different insoles, so depending on the type of insole density and the cushioning setup you're looking for, you're going to find there's a suitable insole for everybody. So I've been a paying customer of Hefalux for years now, and to me, I personally find them to be very comfortable. So if you guys want to check them out and try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and get 15% off your entire purchase. So this is my most recent New Balance 550 pickup, which is a general release colorway. And although I'm pretty sure these released a few months back across the world, here in Canada, we didn't get our shipment until recently. So the style code for this shoe is BB550WBG, and they retail for a price of 110 US dollars or 150 Canadian dollars. And like the majority of 550 releases, this specific pair was made in China. So jumping straight into the details, the majority of the upper, this is constructed out of a very smooth white colored leather. On the toe box, you can see we have these three rows of perforations and the overlay on top, this is done in this asymmetrical fashion. Moving downwards on the lateral side, we have 550 stamped on in this turquoise or teal color. And then beneath this, the leather panel here, it has this perforated finish running down across. And then underneath this, there's a secondary layer of the shiny burgundy leather. Moving downwards on the mid panel, we have more of that smooth white leather. And then we have this cutout in the center, which reveals the New Balance N logo, which protrudes out of the shoe and is done in this burgundy colored material, which sort of has a feel of vinyl. And then surrounding the outer edges, we have this turquoise or teal colored leather. Moving downwards, surrounding the top portion of the ankle collar area, we have this burgundy colored leather. And then underneath this, wrapping around the top of the heel, we have this burgundy colored mesh. And the top portion of this heel area is decently well padded. Underneath this, surrounding the bottom of the heel, we have more of that smooth white leather. And then stamped on the center, we have the New Balance logo done in burgundy. Overlaid on top of this surrounding the back of the shoe, we have this heel clip which gives you added structure and support for the back end of the shoe. And then as we turn our attention back to the front, so right before the laces, you can see a small hit of this burgundy colored mesh. And then above this, for the laces, these only come with one lace option, and they're just your normal flat style lace in white. Underneath this, the bottom half of the tongue is done in this open style mesh, but we have this large nylon tag on top with this New Balance 550 branding along with this basketball graphic, and this is colored in a combination of white, teal, and burgundy. The interior of the shoe is lined in this burgundy colored nylon, and then as we move on to the insoles, these come with these ortholite branded insoles, and as you can see they feature this double stacked foam. So on the top we have your traditional foam insole, we have the New Balance logo stamped on the heel in burgundy, but if I flip it over to the other side, you'll see that the back half of the insole, it sits atop a secondary layer of foam, giving you an additional layer of comfort and cushioning. So the upper of the 550 sits atop this solid rubber cup sole, which is painted in this off-white or sail color. In the middle, we have both the New Balance logo and the New Balance wordmark. And then on the medial side, you'll see how there's a split in the middle, revealing this white colored foam wedge in the center. And then finally, turning the shoe over to the bottom, here we have your standard 550 outsole. So this is constructed out of a combination of gray, burgundy, and white colored rubber. We have this circular pivot point on the forefoot, along with the New Balance logo running down the heel. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these 550s. And for those wondering about sizing, so normally for non-GR 550s, I can go a half size down to a 9.5 with no problems. But because my feet are a little bit on the wider side, I feel like for these general release colorways, I don't know if it's because the leather is a little bit thicker or just more unforgiving, or maybe there's just more padding throughout the shoe. But for some reason, for these general release colorways, I feel like they run a little bit more snug. So I'm kind of in between half size down and true to size. So my feet measures as a true size 10. And I feel like for the nine and a half, the width is a little bit snug. But when I go to a size 10, there's just way too much room from a length perspective. So long story short, if you have narrow or normal width feet, I feel like you can go a half size down with these, but if you have wider feet and you don't mind the extra room from a length perspective, then you'd probably want to stick true to size. Just to give you guys a point of comparison, I also go a half size down in other New Balance silhouettes like the 992, the 990 V3, V4, V5, and the 998. 
and in comparison, I usually stick true to size or a size 10 in other New Balance silhouettes like the 997, the 990V2, most of my 2002Rs, along with a lot of the made in UK models like the 991, the 1500, and the 1530. Moving on to the comfort, so the 550 in general is decently comfortable, but the majority of that comfort is coming from that very well padded insole. However, with these GR colorways, the leather they use feels a lot stiffer. So straight out of the box, this leather can feel a little bit uncomfortable. So it's one of those sneakers you really have to wear a bit more and really break them in. However, once you get past that break-in stage, the 550s definitely mold better to your feet and then you can truly enjoy the comfort of these underfoot. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and craftsmanship. So first off, material quality on these general releases aren't the best especially for New Balance standards. I'm so used to the materials being very top notch. So whenever I pick up one of these GR colorways, it is a little bit disappointing. However, when you compare this leather quality to some of the other major brands, it's not particularly bad. It just has more of that stiff feel to it. And it's not nearly as good as the leather used on their collaboration 550s, for example. However, from an overall build and craftsmanship standpoint, I thought this pair was pretty solidly well built. I didn't notice any flaws at all in my pair. So at least from that standpoint, this pair definitely did a good job. So now that we have all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. The 550, as we all know, is just immensely popular right now, and it's great to see New Balance releasing such fire colorways for general releases too. These are obviously much more accessible compared to the more limited collaborations. And while the quality of the materials aren't the best, I think it fills a gap in the marketplace for people that want this 550 silhouette and don't really care too much about having that super top-notch quality. And for what it's worth, this colorway is very dope as well. I think the mix of the burgundy, the white, and the turquoise, all three just really mesh well together. It kind of has a very collegiate vibe to it. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think but the New Balance 550 in this burgundy and turquoise colorway. What are your overall thoughts on this specific shoe? And in general, are you guys a fan of the 550? Are you a bit tired of it and think it's a bit overdone? Or was it never a silhouette that you're into from the get-go? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on my Instagram account at esco8, check me out on Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seangoca So until next time, Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully it helped you in some way. Thank you for the continued love and support and I'll catch you guys all in my next video.